Hey guys, welcome to a news update here on Buzzing Patea. And uh, what a week we've had. Uh, it's been all going on, to be fair. There's quite a lot happening here. Obviously, we've uh, just passed the monsoon that uh, had the country in panic mode. Uh, fortunately, down here, down here in the city, we didn't really get a huge amount of, uh, of rain in terms of what actually happened up north. Uh, up north, they got battered. And uh, certainly, like in my village in Karat, uh, in the city there, it just was flooded like you wouldn't believe. So, uh, yeah, the rain has come and gone, as they say, and hopefully we are starting to slowly get on the outskirts of the, uh, the wet season. And uh, soon we'll be entering into the cold season. And you're thinking, cold? Are you serious? Uh, but actually, it does get quite chilly out here, especially if you do go up north. Those of you that have been to Chiang Mai and all around the northern parts of the country, uh, you'll know for sure that uh, when you wake up in the morning, it's a bit chilly and it can get cold at night. When I go home up to my, my village, uh, truthfully, at the night time, I put a sweatshirt on <laughs> It really is cold, but then I'm acclimatized, so I guess that's probably one of the reasons why. Uh, anyway, so what's been happening this week? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, last a uh, few days ago, I posted the video about the uh, my experience and how I got mugged off. If you didn't have a look at that, check it out. It's in a, uh, I left it on uh, Saturday for you. And uh, thank you very much to all the comments. I got so many comments, really, literally thousands of comments. Uh, it was fantastic, and you know. If nothing else, at least it shows it can happen, that it does happen, and uh, that there is life after death, as they would say, in terms of the fact that even though it all collapsed and cost me a lot of money, uh, things progressed on, and uh, hey-ho, I'm as happy as Larry right now. So, what's been going on? I'll tell you what, it's been a week of U-turns. It's been a week of U-turns. I'll tell you why. Now, you may or may not be aware that the uh, Prime Minister was booted out. He was told that he's done his tenure and that he's got to leave. Uh, so that he was he was kicked out and he's been reinstated. Uh, they've taken it to court. I don't really get involved in this political palaver, but you know it just doesn't really interest me to be honest. With you. I'm only sharing it because it's in the news. Um, but basically, he was he was uh, he had to resign and leave his position, and then he, uh, he he went to court. They all discussed about how long he'd been in power for and all these kind of bits and pieces. And uh, it makes me laugh. Sorry to diversify, but you ever watched the House of uh, the, the uh, Houses of Parliament? when the politicians are sat there, and they're asleep. Dude, there's, they sleep. If you watch the actual news, you'll see that there's some of them there giving it like Zeds, and they're on like 60, 70 grand a year, and they're in there in the House of Parliament sleeping. I mean, what does that say to the whole world about what our politicians are like? But anyway, I'm out of that situation, so it don't matter. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he's been reinstated, and uh, as, a, as a point of reinstation, he said uh, he vowed to press ahead with the national development strategy to reshape the economy with projects to upgrade transport infrastructure covering roads, railways, airports and ports, as well as digital infrastructure to allow people to uh, people greater access to online platforms in a bid to support transactions and learning. So I get about doing the things for the transport, because let's be honest, uh, it's chaotic here, but I don't get that bit. So maybe one of you guys can help me what he means. I, I ain't got a clue what he's going on about there. People greater access to online platforms in a bid to support transactions and learning. So is that like they're going to bring in some new payment gateways? Or uh, I really don't know. I mean, what you can't find out on the internet nowadays, well, it just isn't worth knowing, really, because at the end of the day, everything's at your fingertips, literally, if you want to go for it. So, yes, yeah, so that's where we are with that dude. And uh, incidentally, now, you may remember, um, very sadly, there was a, a lady that, uh, that took her own life. Uh, she reported to the police that she'd been forced into human trafficking and uh, there was not a lot done about it, to be honest. And so, unfortunately, she took her own life, which is extremely sad. You know, you go to the police to get help and uh, they ushered her back out the door and said, sorry, love, we're not interested. And as a result, she threw herself off a balcony, killing herself. So, as a result of that uh, complete unnecessary fatality, uh, they actually transferred the Patea police chief and they, they booted him out and said, no, nope, we're not having that. You've got, you've got to be responsible for your actions. You're here to take care of people, so get yourself out there, son, and uh, you're done and dust him. However, however, he's back in power. He's back in his seat. He's doing his job. It says here, um, Kun Lachar had been transferred to an inactive post from September the 18th until the 30th after a tragic accident of a Kyrgyzstani woman who plunged to her death, allegedly after being forced into prostitution by a Chinese gangster. Um, so they, they talk about that. Go on, it says, um, where are we? Uh, yes, yeah, it says, uh, been reportedly under review during the suspension period and was ultimately found by his superiors to not be directly responsible for the alleged trafficking incident 
or the police response and return to his duties as the Patea police chief. So what they're saying is he's the top man. They, the report was obviously made to the uh, junior police officers of some description, I don't know who. That wasn't reported up the chain, and so therefore then they booted him out. So now it seems that there are, lower, there are people further down the chain that are responsible, but there's no indication as to what's going to happen to them. And, you know, we can always talk about what goes on here. We all know what goes on here. And, and of course, this adds great fuel to the fire of those that say that, you know, everything's all, it's all human trafficking here, which it isn't. But, you know, at the end of the day, this situation occurred. And it's a, it's a really bad situation to happen. And, you know, my thoughts go out to her family to lose their daughter the way they've done. It's just, it's just not on. Um, but, you know, I don't know who is responsible. There has to be a much more focused way of reporting incidents that get overruled or overviewed by senior police officers. But someone somewhere has to be responsible for that. Now, uh, this one tickled me a little bit. A Thai woman allegedly raced her sedan against a Belgian driver on a Patea road and crashed into a power pole, claiming she got enraged after the foreign driver ridiculed her car. So, ridiculed her car. It goes on to say that the woman identified by Patea police as Miss Champen uh, Tawan Siri, 48 years old, so she's racing at 48 years old, bless her, uh, was rescued, and check this out, right, ridiculed her car after her bronze Mercedes-Benz 220 sedan rammed into a power pole and caught on fire at 3 a.m. on October the 1st. Now, I'm not being funny. If you don't know anything about cars, out here, let me tell you, they are ferociously expensive. They really are hugely expensive. To be riding around in a bronze Mercedes-Benz 220 sedan, trust me, that is not small change. That's not pocket change. You're talking a serious amount of money there for that kind of car out here. So... You know, I don't know who this Belgian guy was that's ridiculed her, uh, but sadly he upset her, and he upset her quite a lot. And uh, obviously she's towed, towed her car, it burst into flames. It says here, police also found another party, which was a Belgian driver, Mr. Stefan Matthew Cordemans. He was 35 years old at the accident scene. His bronze Honda Civic. So she's in a, she's in a Merc, and he's in a Civic, and apparently he laughed at her car. Uh, his bronze Honda Civic sedan was slightly damaged uh, and he was safe. He refused to give any statement to the press or to the police. So I don't quite know what's going on there, but, you know, I don't know. Do you still get road rage in the country? So, you know, back home, do you still... I mean, I know when, when I lived in London, uh, we had a really bad oh, couple of years where road rage was sort of like the, the theme of the day and everyone was jumping out of cars and trying to shoot each other and all kind of stuff. Does that still happen back home? Do you still get these incidents where people get you know, angry and jump out their car and, and want to try and like smash your car up or beat you up? <laughs> Does that still happen? I honestly don't know. But uh, needless to say, this poor lady, um, and the thing is about this situation is she'll get no compensation. Her insurance company won't pay out for that. She's racing her car. She's had an accident. She's totaled her car out. It's blew up. It's, it's in a ball of flames. So she's just had an incredibly, incredibly expensive accident because somebody in a Honda Civic, no offense to any Honda Civic drivers out there, but let's compare like for like. But anyway, um, but uh, so a guy in a Honda Civic <laughs> apparently ridiculed her car. So she's now told, and we're talking serious money here, guys. We're not talking like three or four hundred thousand bucks. We're talking serious money that she just T-boned into a, into a telegraph pole. So there you go. So uh Next time you're out and you're ridiculing a car, be prepared for a bit of road rage and a bit of a racing around. I don't know. One thing the police have been doing, and uh, it's quite interesting how they've come up with it. Let me just find it here. Here we go. Right, so it says here, the Patea police have intensely begun patrolling Patea Beach at night after several teenagers and young adults had altercations in front, in front of the Patea police station. So what they're going on to say is that basically you can't drink alcohol on the beach. Did you know that? So it is actually illegal to drink alcohol on the beach, despite the fact that when you sit down on the beach vendors' uh, areas, you know, where you sit down in the chairs, they'll sell you drink. But it's apparently, it's, it's illegal, it really is. But anyway, these, these uh, people have had the altercations. Um, they did it right outside the police station on the beach. I mean... You know, of all the locations to pick, that's probably not your smartest area to sit down and have a ding-dong with someone. It says here, two groups of teenage students allegedly had an altercation in front of the Patea police station before firing three rounds from a firearm into the sky, 
terrifying nearby tourists. You know, the fact that these kids are walking around with weapons and, and you know, arms, it's, that's in itself is worrying, you know, that should never be allowed. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, unloading rounds up into the sky, all right, I mean, it's, it's pretty safe to fire a gun up in the sky, but, you know, what happens if they, if they aim the gun at somebody or they, you know, wildly shot around, bang, 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 you know, people would die, I mean, it's just, it's just not on. So I don't know how they would, uh, how they're gonna patrol that or how they're gonna try and crack down on the, on the carrying of weapons here, particularly firearms. So, but uh, yeah, not good. Um, but yeah, they do say, where is it, it says it here, uh, police also informed both Thais and foreigners who were relaxing on the beach, some drinking alcohol, that this was illegal. According to the Alcohol Control Act, alcohol is not allowed to be sold or drunk on beaches and high fines or even jail time. Uh, could be applied at law enforcement's discretion. Additionally, public intoxication is also against Thai law. I mean, seriously, come on, let's, let's be on. How, how in the world can it be illegal to drink alcohol on a beach when every single beach vendor that st sets their chairs and tables out will happily sell you alcohol? How does that work? Surely, uh, I don't know. I, I just don't get that bit. <laughs> You can't drink alcohol on a beach, but by the way, go sit in that chair and they'll give you a beer. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's that situation. Now, this one. I'll tell you what's happening here, guys. If you've not been out here recently, you are going to come over and you're going to think you're in Amsterdam. It really is a cannabis fever going on right now. Every single corner you go around, there's a new cafe, a stroke a shop or bar. Um, it's getting, it really is, it's getting crazy. Yeah, honest to God, if you're out here, guys, please, you know, drop your comments below. How bad is it? Because it really is, literally, every corner you go around, you will find these kind of uh, places available. And uh, as a consequence, what, what's been reported now is a Patea cannabis seller files a police report after being allegedly threatened by a gun wielder to stop selling cannabis. Uh, so this guy was selling his gear and a guy with a pistol, a gun, another another firearms incident, says a Thai cannabis seller claims to betray a piece, he was police, that he was threatened by an enraged pistol-wielding man to stop selling cannabis. I've got to be honest with you, I was in a bar the other day and there was a guy who uh, started to, to smoke this stuff and, uh, you know, listen, each there, and I'm not one to tell you what you can and can't do and it's each to your own, it's your life, you do what you wish. But I've got to say, the smell was dis oh, it was just horrible. And, and in the end, we, we left. We, we were on a, we uh, were a big group of us, and we left because it was just really not good. Um, but yeah, so this guy, you know, he just I mean, he had a thing like this, like a blimmin' torpedo, it's a huge bloody thing. Um, but yeah, he was busy doing his thing, but it didn't ask sting. I mean, look, uh, like I say, each to their own. It's none of my business what you do, and and if you do this kind of stuff, no dramas. I have no issue with it at all. But. It is getting quite worrying that every single corner you go around now, every single soy here, even in some of the real remote areas, have got these kind of uh, these cafes and, and uh, bars and stuff selling this stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to pan out. Um, I really don't know. But one thing's for sure is that it's definitely uh, it's claiming a big presence in the city. So be prepared, guys, when you do come over here, or if you're here already, uh, literally every corner you turn you will be presented with this situation, should you wish to indulge. Right, okay, uh, two things I wanna to talk to you about now, which are positive things, uh, really good. And the first one is, is Thailand will fully reopen, well, not fully, it is fully reopened as from the 1st of October. Meaning, it says here, um, the Tourism Authority of Thailand is pleased to advise that as of the 1st of October, international travelers to Thailand will no longer be required to show proof of vaccination or an ATK test result, and that in fact they can now have a longer length of stay will be on offer, signaling the completion of the kingdom's full reopening to international tourism. And they're gonna extend it now to 45 days instead of 30 days. Uh, they go on to say, effective from uh, the 31st of March until, and uh, sorry, and until the 31st of March, 2023, the period of stay in Thailand will be extended to 45 days. Uh, instead of 30 days for tourists from countries or territories entitled for visa exemption and to 30 days instead of 15 days for those eligible for a visa on arrival. 
Now, I'm going to speak to Darren. Uh, there'll be a video out very, very soon. Darren's going to go through it in, in more comprehensive detail because he's the expert. Darren's there at Key Visa Thailand. Uh, so if you do need any information on this, guys, please send him an email, uh, info at keyvisathailand.com. Get in touch with Darren. He's he's an extremely wealthy uh, wealth of knowledge. He, you know, he's very, very um, well established. He has a very good reputation. But speak to him because he can give you more information. But like I say, I'm going to bring a video to the channel very, very soon where he's going to go through and discuss everything there that's going on. All right, so I saved the best till last. Who's here on the 29th? Who's here on the 29th of October? Get yourself down to the beach because on the 29th of October, there is the Patea International Bikini Beach Race. I've done this before, not personally partaken, uh, but I have been down there and done some videos in the past. And it's brilliant and it's packed, it's packed. So if you like seeing uh, uh, women running around in their bikinis, um, then uh, come down on the 29th. It really is great. It's right outside Central Festival, uh, which is where, if you're not sure about Central Festival, that's the Hilton. So if you get yourself on the beach side of the Hilton Hotel, uh, trust me, you won't miss it. There'll literally, there'll be hundreds and hundreds of girls walking around in their bikinis, ready to go and run. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a colorful and very eventful event and one that's definitely not to miss. And uh, they, some take it very seriously. Uh, the guys that run, uh, they, they nail it out in some, some time. And I'll tell you what, one of the things I think that they often uh, uh, underappreciate and don't, don't realize is running on sand is just terrible. It's hard work, it really is. You know, it's hard enough trying to lay down on the beach, let alone run along it. So, you know, they are putting themselves through it to run on that sand. But yeah, the guys, there's some guys, they, they do it quite quickly. Um, but it's, it's a great event, it's a big event. The girls will go off and do their, their fun run. Uh, later on, there's, there's DJs and music playing down on the beach. It's a big international uh, event, and there's lots of food vendors and stalls and all that kind of stuff there, so you really will have a good time. And of course, it goes without saying, there's plenty of eye candy. Right, guys, there you go. That's the news this week. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, next week, I don't think I'll bring a news to you because I'm going to be up in Karat. So uh, I'll see. I'll see what I can do. I might do a live. I might do a live from Karat and talk about the news while we're there. Um, I don't know. Let me figure that one out because I'm going to go home. It's um, our, our youngest one is now going from junior school to senior secondary school. So it's a big party and celebration for her. Bless her. Right, there we are. That's it. Um, what else have I got to say to you? I think that's about it, really. Um, yeah, I ain't got much else to say, really. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please, as always, remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I bring out a new video. Uh, have a look on Discord, 18,700 members now. We have a regular news section there, so we're posting news every single day. So have a look in there. There's loads and loads of different rooms you can interact in, and it really is a wealth of knowledge on there. So have a look at that. It's completely free of charge. Uh, and if you'd like to support the channel, there is a link to our members area down below. Please take a look at that. And coming up soon in the not too distant future will be my members area in the new website that we're building at the moment as I speak to you now. Uh, so that will be packed full of goodies, etc. So have a look at that once that becomes live. I've binned off Kofi. Um, I was going to go down that road, but then again, I'm in the hands of somebody else like I was with Patreon, and I just don't want to go, go down that route again. So uh, the Kofi thing is no more. Short and sweet, but no more. Let's wait until we get the members here, and then we're good to go 100%. All right, thanks very much for watching, guys, and please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe.